Hey everyone, Hunter from Ron Cichlids here. Today I'm going to be moving some of our Mabuna and Victorian fry to the next stage of grout. So they'll be going from these hang-ons here to either 20 gallons or 10 gallons. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So if you haven't seen us use these before, or haven't seen a video like this before, the uh, our fry, when they uh, when I first strip them from the females, from the mother's mouth, they go straight into these hang-ons, and they'll be in these hang-ons for usually about a month, maybe two months, depends how many, and then depends what species, but after that, they go into these 20 gallons, or I got a few 10 gallons I use as well, but it's mainly the, the uh, 20 gallons. These are Clown Labs. Probably only about 30 of those, but I'm gonna go around and label these tanks when I'm done and then I'll also write how many. So it's mainly gonna be Mabuna and then just a uh, just one species of Victorians I'll show in a little bit. Next I have Philiborni Catale. These are a really rare species of uh, Trevasi. Oh, le let me say Labiotrophus. Yeah, not Trevasi. So le Labiotrophus filiborni. But my group finally started breeding good, so I, uh, I, uh, I finally got a good batch to start growing up. I've only been getting like 10, 15 fry from from one female here or there. It's just been uh, hard to dedicate a whole tank for just them. Um, for these 20 gallons, I like to have at least 30 if I'm gonna dedicate a, a whole tank to them. If not, the species I have less of. So like I said, if I only had 15, I'll combine those with something else into a 20 gallon. Uh, that way, a whole 20 gallons not dedicated to 15 fish. So I have probably 25 or so on that first hang on. Got probably the same amount here. And the water tank, the water temp in basically all these tanks is identical, so. I like to go slow, but I could just dump them right in and it won't have any harm on them whatsoever. And then all the water um, parameters are the same. So, nothing to worry about if you think I'm going too fast um, with acclimating them. I'm not really trying to acclimate them at all. That's all I'm trying to say. Just slowly letting them out. And then this will be the only Victorian I do. Albino Cayuga Flamebacks. Same thing that with this uh, species, my my breeder group finally started breeding good, so I'm able to finally dedicate a uh, 20 gallon just for them. This is another really rare species. Not many people deal with Victorians, and not many people deal with albino Victorians because there's not many of them. The uh, the only two I know of that I can think of off the top of my head are albino. Um, Cayuga Flamebacks, of course, and then Albino Ruby Greens. I think those are the only two I've seen. Um, I'm sure there's more. If you know of any more, comment them down below. I'll look them up and see what they look like. I'd be interested in uh, in seeing what <clears throat> what else there is for Albino Victorians. I'm curious about that. I'm sure a lot of people are trying to experiment with them, but it takes a while to to get an Albino or to create it, so. Mm. 
And then of course, all these fry were bred and raised by us. The rest of them are gonna be on the other side. I'll start moving them over here. Go ahead and start with these, the Dactari. Uh, and then uh, this doesn't really apply to me except for a sp few species, but little tip for anybody that breeds and is not an expert when it comes to African cichlids or really any fish, just a good rule of thumb. If you think you might get confused about a species, uh, like if, let's say I got two species in these tanks right here, one here and one here, and they both look similar um, until they're bigger, it's probably not a good idea for you to put them side by side because if one jumps over by chance, they usually don't, especially with the the water um, level I have. But if one were to jump over and you're a novice or you don't really fully know what um, to look for for the differences, you could confuse um, one for being another species, and then you just that whole that whole side now is um, not going to be pure because now you're gonna they're gonna hybridize. So that, that one, especially if it's a male, if you've got a male that, no, I mean, somebody say female. Because female, for like Victorians, they all look really similar. Um, especially like the Nairi. So you got one that jumps over a female and you don't realize, and a male spawns with that. That's a hybrid. And now you're going to have to basically start over with all new ones if you're trying to produce pure offspring. But yeah, in my case, I would never put like a Makobi Island Nairi next to a Rudy Island uh, or Juma Island Nairi. I can, I can tell the difference between the males, but I can't tell the difference between the females. Even the, even the ex, even people higher in than me, and I'm, I'm an expert, um, I'll say, um, for the level we're doing this, it's, it's near impossible for anybody to be able to distinguish them. Because the females will sometimes change their, uh, their darkness how, how bright, like that female, they're usually grayish green. Uh, that, that'll fade in and out. And then uh, also, some will have a little bit of barring or stripes and whatnot. They, that all fades in and out depending on, on the female in the tank, uh, if it's bright or if it's dark, um, if they're stressed out a little bit. So even top of the line person that collects them from the wild couldn't, wouldn't be able to tell those two species apart for a female. Males is different. A male is going to color up and, and you'll know. But if you breed peacocks, this is a uh, definitely a good thing to keep in mind because a lot of peacock females look really similar. They, they're that black, um, well, I should say brownish gray color. There's a few that are no-brainers, uh, but then there's some that just look so identical that, yeah, if, if a male were to, an unsexed little male were to jump over, and it colored up eventually, you'd know, hey, that's a, uh, that's a ruby red, not a Benga sunshine, and you could pull it out. But if it were a female, if it were a, fe if it were a female, you wouldn't know. So, just food for thought. So I'm gonna keep in mind if you're trying to breed these, these fish. I still do that when it comes to, uh, when it comes to species I can't really tell the difference of. And even if I do, it's better to, to not risk not risk it at all. I got so many tanks. I'll just space them out. So, I usually, um, even when I can easily tell the difference, I'll just put like, uh, let's say peacock, mabuna, then peacock, then hat, then peacock, and you see what I'm doing. There's even if one jumps over, there's no way I'd mix up a peacock with a mabuna or a hat because they look so different. But more of a piece of advice for anybody new to breeding not fully familiar with the species but there are so many species and a lot of species have females that look similar to another that was it for the dactari i have three hang on to them Let's see what i'll get next i've got deep nidanga kenchedza and masoba deep so like I'll explain real quick. I don't want to make this two video too long, but I like trying to give helpful information when I can. Like Masobo Deep and the Daktari, for somebody who's not an expert or maybe a novice, I'll say, uh, 
they may confuse a Masobo Deep un uh, Juvenile with a uh, Doctari, so that'd be one I'd space out. I obviously would not mix those up. I can really tell the difference pretty easily on those, but that's just a good example. But you'll see, I got no reason to put them right next to each other. I got plenty of tank space, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these Deep Ndonga, which com look completely different than the Dactari. And then some of these species of Ohuna, uh you may have never heard of, or may have never seen before, or may not find accurate photos online. So if there's any that you hear me name, and you uh, and you want to see what the, my breeders look like, see what they actually look like, let me know. I can do a, a stripping video. Just do make a comment down below. Say hey, I want to see your deep Ndanga breeders. I'll do a I'll do a video on the breeders, uh, me scooping them out, showing the males, showing the females, and then. Hopefully get some fry. So I think that'd be a cool little video for anybody curious about a certain species, but I'm always looking for more content um, ideas for videos. As you can see, with all the fish, I stay pretty busy, so I do my best, best to make videos for you guys, but it's uh, hard to keep up with fresh new content, different stuff. The uh, Kenchedza, uh, butchering the name a little bit, but there are new species of Mabuna I've been carrying, but those most people probably have never seen before. They're another rare one, but Deep Madonga are also a rare one. I'm one of the few people online, maybe the only, um, selling at least bigger ones, but not many people online especially are, are selling Deep Madonga. Just two hang on to the deep Nidanga. Go ahead and do these Masobo deep, and then the Kanchetsta, I gotta go into a 10 gallon. And after I move them all to hang-ons, I'll also just give you a close-up. I'll take the, the phone off my head and uh, I'll do a close-up showing all the uh, fry. I love the little Mubuna fry and especially the, the Victorians as well, especially when they're a little bit bigger because um, the males start coloring up. But I like showing off the little Mubuna fry because they have quite a bit of color at a young size. My Sobo Deeps especially, they, uh, they're one of my favorites. Same with Solosi because uh, the males and females all start off yellow, so they have quite a bit of color, and then the uh, the males will turn bluish black as they start to mature. So they uh, the last they change. And one more hang on to the Masobos. They're all be bopping around, exploring their new tank. All right. Gonna have to drain a little bit of this water for the 10 gallons. If not, they'll, they'll get too full. The drain on on the 10 gallons can't quite keep up if I put too many hang-ons into them at once. It'll 
start to overflow out the bottom. But hopefully uh, the camera's picking everything up. These guys are becoming one of my favorites. Really cool body shape and, and face to them. They're a species of a trophy ops, if you know what those are. But they are really different than any other trophy ops. They, uh, they'll actually get really long torpedo shape compared to, I should have went over there, but compared to the, uh, to the other trophy ops, like the Abano Redhead Mac, regular Red Cheek Mac. They, uh, they're much more short, like, uh, like short bodied. They're not very, very long, much higher looking body. Kind of like the, uh, I believe it's the Petro Tilapia. But, uh, if you're wondering why I'm putting these in a 10 gallon, it's because there's less of them. Another reason why uh, I like the uh, having a few 10 gallons, like I said, sometimes I have I, uh, species where I only have like 15 fry. In that case, I'll, uh, I'll sometimes, if I have the room, put in a 10 gallon. Uh, just depends. If I've got other fish I can combine them with, I'll put them in a 20 gallon, but sometimes I don't. With these, I'll probably have a little over 30 in that tank. They'll just end up getting moved to 20 gallon a little sooner than if I were to put like 15 in here. Forgot to drain out though, so I'm sure the water is gonna overflow a little bit out the bottom. I completely forgot to drain out a little water from these last two. Right, I'm gonna get the marker. I'm gonna take the phone off and hopefully try to get better uh, better look at these while I'm writing. All right, here we go, Clown Lab. And then probably, probably 25, there isn't as many as I thought. Really cute at the size, they look like white labs. They don't have the uh, the stripes yet, but these are definitely clown labs. These were the uh, Katale. They're uh, not very <laughs> bright looking at this size, but. Probably, I venture to say 60 in there. There's quite a few. But uh, these, the uh, females are really cool. They uh, they're usually OB, they're blotched. And then the males, depends, they're usually um, not blotched, but some do have blotches. I got a batch of 50 to grow, and then uh, I ended up with, with about half the females, and let me say, half are females, half are males. Out of all the females, probably 20 of them were uh, blotched with uh, OB pattern. The rest didn't have a pattern, just standard. And then the, uh, the males, it was the opposite. About 20 didn't have the uh, the OB blotching, and then the uh, last five did. So I took the uh, the males that had the blotching, and then the females that had the blotching, put them together, and they've been breeding. So these should be OB. So I technically need to put OB. They should all be OB. But there's quite a few Mabuna where there's an OB variant. If you don't know about that, I'd recommend doing some uh, some research, look online. It's it's really interesting. But it just depends. Uh, mainly which male and female you breed, but there's quite a few uh, species. One other one I breed that uh, is like that is the Masinji Zebra. I've got Obi Masinjis from those and Standard Masinjis.
think there was about 35 in there. A Bino Kyogre Flamebacks. You should start coming up here within an inch or so. They caught very small, but they're doing really well. It's a little male right there, but can't really see the color on the camera. Dactari. Little egg spot, cute little male. Marker's running out. These are chalk mark, uh, no paint markers. Chalk markers will wipe away with, when you hit them with water. So in this environment, much better to use paint marker. But there's quite a few in there because I put three hang on, so I'm gonna go with 70. Deep and Donga. Not a whole lot of color, but they got a lot of color in their fins for this size. The males are gorgeous when they're when they're bigger. I may do a a video stripping my brooder group on these. Thing is, the uh, the males color down as soon as you put the net in the tank, so they won't look good in, in the camera as they do in person. But it's my first good batch for my new group I, I uh, put together. I think there's about let's see. I'll say 40. And then in the Sobo Deep. Another really, really bright colored one when they're small. Quite a bit of color for their size. Don't really breed common Mabuna, and the uh, common Mabuna are the ones that the males usually look just like the females, and they have color from birth to, to full grown. Uh, the only one common one that I deal with really is the yellow labs, but when you're talking about Mayaganos, Kenyais, oh, there's so many. Uh, bumblebees, Aratus, Jahani, let's go, Succolophi, Abano Succolophi, um, Exasperatus, ones like that I just don't deal with. They're just too common uh, for me, especially when it comes to shipping fish. People, when people want those fish, they just go to the pet, pet store. But yeah, you'll see, like the ones I've I've been doing are all rare to, well, harder to find to very rare species. Nothing you really find at a, uh, at a, pet, at a, a pet smart pet, pet car or whatever. But quite a few in here. I'll go with another 60. And let's go over to the uh, Conchesta. This one you will not find at a pet store. If you did, you struck gold, but. See if I can spell it right. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I think there's only about 30 in there. Not much color on these guys for their size. This video is getting long, but uh, I want to show the, the breeder group. I see they're fired up over there, so let me turn this light on. Let's get a quick shot of them. They're right here. There we go. There's three males. One. There's one up there. Two. Three. But that's the full name. Trophy Ops and Long Goddess Bazulu Conchetza. But really unique looking fish. Alright, that's gonna be it for this video. A little longer than I expected. But if you uh if you like long videos like this, uh definitely appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Um and then let me know in the comments down below if you do. I, uh, I don't want to make, be making long videos if people don't want to watch the end. I'll stick with shorter ones if it uh, helps keep keeps people attention longer. I try to do more in less, um, in less time in a video if that's what you guys prefer. Or if you like the longer ones, um, I'll keep doing the longer ones. I got no problem doing longer ones for you guys. I just like showing the whole process and then showing the... Uh, Showing off the fish at the end. I, I love looking at little fry at this size. It's so cute. They go from this to, to um, you know, fully mature, full size. 
and the uh, it's just awesome watching them transform. So one of the nice parts about growing, breeding, and growing your own fish, but at the same time, this takes a while, a lot of time, and a lot of money dedicated to these little suckers to get them to the size you guys want. So I really appreciate you guys watching and all all the support, of course. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.